Welcome to TV Savalas once again. I'm here with my man, my brother, Saint African. Hello. How you doing, brother? I'm doing good. I'm doing I, good. I want to thank you first of all for doing this interview with me. Oh yes. Thank you for your time. Um, and I know you're a busy man. You got a lot to do this weekend, man. So we just gonna get right into it, man. Okay. I know you for a long time, so some of these things might be personal, but a lot of this stuff is just uh, what you've been doing most recently in your life, in your career. Okay. All right, my big big homie. The first question is because you've been kind of controversial in, in social media. Okay. Uh, saying that uh, some people of African American descent are not Africans. Mm -hmm. Malcolm X. No, he's he's a uh, he's a griff. As a griff, um, meaning he has a mulatto parent. And by I me, mean by mulatto, one of his parents is half black and half white. So he can't be an African. And yeah. Shout out to Miss Mulatto, man. Shout out to Miss Mulatto. <laughs> yeah, cause you know, she dicks, man. You know, she doing her hip hop thing. <laughs> <laughs> Colin Kaepernick, man. I don't know what he is, dude. His like, mom's white. His mom's his mom white. white. So, yeah. But he, he multiracial, yeah. Uh, Barack Obama, 44th president. He multiracial, but we call him Mulatto. He, no, we, he not black. Is there any other, other people uh, in the uh, major community who we think that are Africans, but they may not be African as far as biologics? Definitely. Um, Tracy Ellis Ross. Uh, That's Diana Ross? Daughter. Daughter. With okay. the Jew boy. She have Jewish. Um, I might get some I might get some flack for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who else? Um, I, just, I just thought of the name. Um, Blake Griffin. Oh yeah, basketball player. Blake Griffin. Um, who who's some famous people? Uh, that Jadena dude. Jadena, I'm not familiar. He right. like some African singer or something. Okay. Um, J Cole's a big one. You okay, know he, yeah. but that's why he grows his locks. A lot of people manipulate their hair, mm -hmm. um, so they can look more African. Okay. Um, but then probably if you ask them if they are African, they'll say no. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh. So. Your take on, on that. Um, so, what is what is an African? Oh yeah, me, you, um, you know, people from the place of Africa. You know, brown or black skin, okay. African texture hair. You know, um, our hair doesn't come curly. Our hair doesn't come, um, you know, loose and matted. And mm. so we we have a distinct feature. Some will call us dark skin, um, but you know, if we are original skin, people. Huh? Yeah, you know, pork chop skin. Pork chop. That's yeah, the yeah. mulatto boy called me in New York. <laughs> and, you know, the, the thing is, like, now we, we just repping our identity. We're getting our identity back. We're repping our sanity and our culture. So yeah. we need to go ahead and reclaim that shit. You know what I mean? So African brown or black skin, African texture hair. You know, we don't come in various shades. And it's like we're brown to black. You dig? And uh, uh, what's this? Um. Man, albino. Albinos come in all races. Okay. Um, a lot of people use. A lot of people don't understand genetics or biology, so they don't. They don't understand like albinism is a. Is it could be a disease or a genetic mutation. Mm. And a mutation is nothing negative. It's just something that happens. So albino doesn't have melanin. Okay. So they, they albino. They, they appear white. That don't mean they're light skin. Mm. They have a disease, so you can have an African albino, a European albino, okay, okay. an Indian albino. That's, that's still good. our people. It's not a person that's lighter because they have mixed DNA. It's just a genetic mutation. I didn't know that. I learned something today. Thanks mm -hmm. for the education. Yes, sir. All right, let's uh, dig a little deeper, man. So where are you from? Originally? Originally, where you from? I'm from Long Beach, California, East Side. Man, LBC. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Man. 562 213. Shout out 310. Snoop Dogg, I see. Yes, shout out to the <laughs> boss dog. He put us on the map. Uh, what What was it that you've seen or read that made you want to learn more about um, your descendants of Africa? Oh, man, that's a good question. Um, I've seen a lot. Like, I mean, I, that, I guess you got to be specific, but like, Living in America, you know, for over <laughs> over two decades, you did you you see some things and it make you want to connect and be like, why are we being treated like this? Why are we different? Um, but I read some cool books. Like I had some, my grandfather, rest his soul. You know, he 
He always had like African American history books scattered around the house. One of my great uncles too. Um, he was a businessman out in Frisco. So he just showed me, you know, we need to have pride in ourselves. And um, I used to always remember growing up in the 90s, you see the NOI on the TV. You never, But you never really know. You say, like, oh, them, the Muslim dudes or something. Right, right. Um, but they always was esteemed. They always had pride. They was looking sharp. Yeah, yeah. Um, I remember Farrakhan and Khalid in the 90s, and you really know who they was, but you're like, damn, that black man talking strong, and he ain't cussing, and but he getting his point out, and that would make me just go go research more. Um, but as I got older, I was dealing with my own situations and life and racism and working and dealing with, you know, Wazungu out in the crowd and in the workplace. You 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 want you research, mm-hmm. so just going through going through books, you know. And I I knew we came from Africa, but I never really jumped back okay. until. Um, what really kicked it off, I guess I was like 19, 18, and I met I met my brother um Hazmat, a man, peace of the God, peace of the God. Um he a five percenter. So he put me on to the nation of gods and earths, um, five percent nation, you know, gave me some supreme mathematics, supreme wisdom. Right. And that's what really opened my eyes to a lot of more things. Like I was and ever since then, you know, the black man is God. We we God, man, woman, and child. We we make our own destiny. Uh, we we rule the universe, and we can't be stopped. So that's what I've been moving with since, and just gaining more knowledge helped me uh, get back to Africa. So 18 and 19 years old, were you uh, in the Bay Area? Were you in Southern California? I was in L.A. Okay, I was in L.A. Man, is is it a lot of that? The five percent is in L.A. Nah, hell no. Nah. It's it's really like um, it came from New York. Okay, like yeah. came from New York, um, peace to the Father Allah, Clarence Thirteen X. Um, so it came from him, and it spread out. And the reason, like, I cherish it, even though I'm not with it no more, but some of the principles are still valuable. Right, right. Um, because he he went out to the brothers in the streets, to the, the brothers that nobody wants to touch, the brothers that you know you see him walk and you run, kind of like mm-hmm. we see today. Um, and he gave them the knowledge, so. This, I think it's a beautiful thing, and you know, those are the people that we forget about, and we need to go out and get them. Yeah. So I, I can never forget that. And um, the funny, the fun thing about it, the dude who who put me on, he younger than me. Oh, for real? Yeah, he, you're younger yeah. than me. So yeah. he had the knowledge back then. He, was he had the knowledge, and I used to always tell him, like, bro, I don't want to hear that shit. <laughs> and it's, it's funny, and we talk about it now. Like he um he clowns me, he clowns me, and it's funny because he be like, oh, I remember you was eating bologna sandwiches. He, mm. Eating foul, and I'll be like, "Oh, okay." Like, you know, I can't, I can't argue with that. So it's like, no matter where I'm at now, he'd be like, "I met you. You was eating bologna sandwiches. You eating pork and swine." I'm like, oh, "Damn." You know? <laughs> so it's it's always humbling to right. not to not forget, you know, this this where I came from. So I can always look at everybody behind me and just be like, "Yo, it's all good. We we moving. We yeah, moving. definitely we moving forward, man." And I, like I told you uh, months ago that, you know, uh, your knowledge itself really um, uh, was pr- not pressed upon me, but it impressed upon me mm. uh, to go seek and learn about uh, Africa and uh, myself as a black man in America, you know, um, because I was heavily into uh, Christianity. Mm-hmm. I was doing gospel rap and all kind of stuff. I remember. And, and um, you know, I seen you take a picture with Dr. Umar Johnson. And I know you, you know, off, off, off camera, I know you, right, you know what I mean? Right, right. So, um, I was like, he took a picture with this dude, and I didn't know who he was, and I was like, I know St. African, you know what I mean? Like, this ain't Nas, this ain't Ice Cube, yeah. like, you know what I mean? Like, so why he take a picture with this dude? And so I happened to look him up, and then seen a couple of his videos, and kind of went from there. And that's like how, what got me, like, started in, you know what I mean, um... Pan Africanism and, and things of, and things like that, you know what I mean? Yeah. And me starting to gain knowledge was because of you, brother. So. Oh wow. Yo, shout out. That's you what's know, up. That was years ago now, maybe five, six years ago now, and I've just been uh, pressing for it ever since. You know what I'm saying so. Thanks, brother, and you. you Thank know, you. By by that knowledge and wisdom that you gained and got it and displayed and shared, you know, and I shared that with my wife, and then you know, um, that just molded our relationship even more. That's you know love. I mean? So. I salute you, brother. Salute to you, man. And so uh, the next, indeed. the next thing I want to ask you is, uh, <laughs> what is black?
black culture, what does it feel like? What does it look like? What does it taste like? What does it sound like? Damn, that's that's heavy. Um, I guess we have to ask like, what's black? Like you know, because that, that's the whole thing. But I think you know, it's just us being our unapologetic selves. And I don't mean that as no. <laughs> I don't mean that for that LGBT stuff, you did. <laughs> so I gotta say that. I gotta say that. You know, no, no knock on them. I'm right, just saying, right. not that's not the message. Okay. I'm saying, being we keeping it black and African focused. Uh, so being our unapologetic self, you know, getting a black woman and living well, having some black children, um, you know, trying to do for yourself by being the best man you could be while providing for your family, um, going home to Africa. You dig to see the culture, see our people, um, loving your family, treating treating us with love. Like I'm not with the old, you know, the black woman is God and all that hoopla bullshit. Mm -hmm. It's bullshit. Um, and we worshiping people that who don't deserve titles like you, my brother, Savalis. We we know we kings, but we ain't gotta walk around. We ain't got no kingdoms. We ain't, mm. we not free. So we can't walk around talking about pie in the sky things when we don't want to focus on reality. So, like I'm saying, like you a brother, you got a family, you got a wife, you out here doing your thing. We on your platform. I'm, what's better than that? Mm. You dig? I'm I'm getting my things together. I'm not I'm not at that phase in manhood yet of having a family, but I'm being my unapologetic self. Right, I'm right. accomplishing my dreams and goals. I'm not cutting nobody. Even of running a business, I'm not trying to seek or. I'm doing it on my own, the same way you're doing your vision. I, I, to me, that that that's what it should look like. Um, and as right here, we collaborating as two black men on our own platforms, on your platform. And I mean, what's better than that? Uh, so, it's uh, black culture is not uh, pork chops, collard greens, and cornbread. It's deeper than that. Deeper than that, definitely. Okay. Um, we everywhere. We we you know. Shout out to Haiti. Shout out to Haiti. You know, some of my my pops people from. Um, so you know, we go over there and we got that culture. You got some people that's from Jamaica, uh, Africa, Nigeria. I just came from Uganda. So speak uh, about Uganda. How how was that? Uganda. First, how was the flight? How long was the flight? Um, damn, how long was the flight? It was like to Turkey. It was like um. I think like 14 hours maybe. Right. I, I can barely remember now. Um, but I ended up getting stranded in Turkey for like a day because I missed my flight. Um, but that was cool because I ran into a lot of people. Well, I, I seen uh, I seen a lot of people out there and I seen a lot of things I was never seen in my life. Right. Um, just the the environment. Um, just seeing Turkish people, seeing how they look like. How they look, like Eastern <laughs> Europeans look kind of like East Africans, but pale. Mm -hmm. Like, it's always crazy. And they're just seeing, just, they didn't just have all the hair, like the Arabs. Um, I seen a few black people out there. Uh, we was just looking at each other like, <laughs> what you doing? Like, what the hell are you doing here? <laughs> and, uh, so that was cool to see them was out there. But to just get that opportunity was dope. And then we went to, um, we went to Uganda and we stayed, we was all over. We stayed in the village. Mm -hmm. We stayed in the city. Um, shout out to all my people out there in the village. Um, so we went to Kampala. Kampala was dope. I never seen so many black people at the top of the morning. It wasn't even um, daylight, and they was out in the streets hustling and bustling, trying to get some work. And I was just like, "Wow, this is uh, this is amazing." You've never just seen anything like that. Never in my black life. People, right? Never. Never seen so many black people at the. They up before the sunrise, trying to, trying to do something productive. Right. You know. Legally, right, right, you know what right. I mean? That's the key part about it, legally. right, right. Because right. some of us will get up, but it don't be for don't legal be for purposes, nothing. right? <laughs> well, I don't be for nothing. Good point. Yeah, we, uh, we on the, we online or some shit. <laughs> so, um, but y'all, Africa was dope. We uh, I went to the village. I stayed in the village about two weeks. Um, beautiful. Everything was nature. I went out to like this uh, this big garden mm -hmm. in the middle of like this valley. Um, seeing red soil, the grassland. Man. Uh, I ain't see like no major animals, but I, I I seen a lot of just African people that look like me, mm -hmm. look like you. They they welcomed me there with open arms. Um, the sisters was cooking for a brother. They were serving a brother. Um, pregnant sisters serving a brother. Um, just going to certain people's restaurants, see how they cook. I had so much goat. <laughs> I never really had goat before, but goat is fire. Yeah, goat yeah. is fire, man. Um, 
And it was cool. We went to, we went to a few healers. We went to a few. Uh, <laughs> I went to a, a, a spiritualist. Okay. You know, um. Spiritualist? She didn't want to do what I, I really wanted her to do. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm gonna really leave it at that. Alright. You know, um, she went, then at the end, she tried to charge me. Well, she tried to charge me a good amount of paper. Mm -hmm. Um, so I told her, I was like, no, nah, I'm cool. But I gave her like 40, um, I gave her like 20,000 shillings mm -hmm. just for talking to me and, um, Taking her time, and then it was funny because she was like, "Oh no, now I can do it! I can do it!" Uh, and I'm like, "No, no, it's cool, it's cool." Like I, it's, it was like my last day. I wasn't trying to be running around looking for a chicken. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, I, I went to go see that. Um, stay with stay with some good family people, and it, it was just beautiful, man. How did they interact? The family people was it like was it a good system they had going? They yeah. were like I know you said uh, pregnant women were cooking and stuff mm -hmm. and, and out so. Uh, did they have like a, a good like family structure seemed like? Hell yeah. Um everybody was in their role. The men was going out like looking for get some paper or they was going out getting some getting the uh just getting money. Okay. It, by any means or they was going out trying to find some things. Um the women they, they was usually sitting around some of the day or they was doing household chores, um, cooking and it was like they prepared the meals early. Mm. They go out and get everything fresh. Um, even with the kids. The kids were so well behaved. As a family unit, it was dope that every time we ate, we all sat down together. Um, you know, we all sat down together. Everybody got a nice, good portion of food, um, and it was just festive to sit down and just eat at like seven or you know, some was like fifteen in a room, and we over here laughing and eating, and people was just coming in the door and oh hey, and 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 the greatest thing I learned there is. Um, which we need to get on them is greeting people. Um, when you come in the room, ain't no what's up. You better. Mm. And they, they did. Uh, it was so dope that they have like they own. Every culture, I guess, has like a different greeting. Okay. Um. So out in, I was with in Uganda, but it was some Rwandans and stuff I was with, and you know doing their greeting all the time. So I come in, I'd be like, oh. and you gotta touch everybody. You know, everybody, like, hey, how you doing? How you doing? I thought that was so beautiful. Mm. Um, as soon as you walk in the room, ain't no oh, what's up. It's just like so. I even had to get used to that. Mm. And they was telling me at the end, they was laughing because I would come in the room and I'd be like, <laughs> and they was like, oh, you got it now. <laughs> 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 and so it was, it was dope. It was dope because after a while, you just get so used to it. Yeah. And you know, it was like, okay, I got it. So in a small time that you were there, you were able to adapt to their culture. Facts. Dang, that's what's up, man. Facts. That's what's up. Uh, so you spoke about you know the man going out there getting it, being independent, basically mm. providing for the families. Uh, you spoke several times about uh, me having my own platform, and we're just talking about entrepreneurship, hustling. So you, you got a shirt on now that says life. Facts. Is that your brand or is that something that you bought? Um, no, it's just me. This is um, Divine so, Originals, Saint African. Saint African, Divine Originals. Mm -hmm. So can you explain uh, Saint African? Where did that come from? Uh, really, because I, I, oh yeah, sure. Um, saying African is a company. It's a, it's a, it's a, um, it's an overall company. It is a, we do clothing, we got the clothing sector, and we also do media. Um, basically the media that we're covering is black African media. Um, we're covering nationalism, politics, um, identity. Mm. Um, we also survey, um, we do like to conduct surveys because I'm, I'm big on psychology, as you see. Um, that's my focus and what, what makes people move, what makes people do what they do. Um, even if, you know, I admit this, if you look on my page on Instagram, a lot of people think like I throw up a bunch of crazy shit and ask the questions. Um, little do they know I'm running case studies. Oh. <laughs> you told everybody now, man. I mean, it's all good. They, they don't want to engage with me no more anyway. So, I mean, it's cool. Like, it's all good. Um, so yeah, I'm running case studies, and I like to see what is what is people thinking. Because really, if you look at social media and you look at, like I used to be on Twitter a lot, and I had to get all because it gives you a headache. Um, if you really look, you can look at where we are as a state of America. Mm -hmm. Scroll down your timeline and look. This is what just look at what all black people are talking about. Mm -hmm. It is everywhere, right? And it's not on one accord. So that's why you know the social companies do it. Well, like like that's why a lot of uh, European Americans are getting off Facebook because. All these companies are running case studies. That's why when you log into Facebook or Instagram, you'll see an ad for something you was probably just talking about. Right, 
right. or something. You was just researching. Yeah. Even profiles will come up from that. But we a lot of people don't look at it like that. So that's kind of what I'm doing. Um, but explain the company wise that that's what we will be covering on the media. Um, really just the globalization of nationalism. A lot of people are nationalizing right now as we see like look at Hong Kong. Um, and I'm not really with the ADOS thing and all that, but I think us as America, we need to look around and see what's going on. So we can put our plan up. So saying African is just um, us reclaiming our African sanity at the end of the day. Um, I just came up with it because I think it sound well. Um, it's something that describes myself. Um, and I think many of us, we are trying to be something that we already are. I don't need to throw on a dashiki to say I'm an African. Right. I don't need to speak an African language to say I'm an African. Mm. Um, but you, we run across all these people now who have crutches. And it's like, well, I'm, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And it's like, usually they're mixed or something. It's like, well, I was born like this. Sure, I don't right, right. need to be what I already am. Mm. So it's kind of like that, um, reclaiming our identity, reclaiming our sanity. Um, in a nutshell, and, that, and that's really what St. African represents. And we're not, and I, I pride myself in my company that it's all grassroots. I'm, I'm the sole profiteer, I'm the sole owner. I have no partners, I have no sponsors. Mm -hmm. um, and that was, that's what makes it so great because I can't, I would never compromise um, myself or my company just so I can get a bigger platform or views or things like that or just sales because it's not about the money. Mm. It's about putting the message out. Message over money. Facts. And that's what Man. makes it much more dangerous. And I, after doing the who was black thing, as you touched on early at first, um, after getting death threats, mm. uh, I've been sabotaged by people online. I'm not going to say their name, but it's a Haitian guy. He tried to sabotage me by putting out a smear campaign against my videos. Um, just things like that. But he comes from a place... Where it's all black people, but you call mulattoes black. Mm -hmm. This don't make sense. Um, so, death threats, slander, um, lack of support because I do make a stand on multiracial people and mulattoes. So, all those things that come with it. Um, but we still here because I don't, I'm not dependent mm -hmm. on these other groups of people um, to help get my message out. Right, so, right. the truth will never be compromised. And I, I say all to say that I don't hate those people. I don't got a problem. I'm just not afraid enough to say you're not black. Mm -hmm. And I have my self-esteem is high enough and my integrity is strong enough that I believe that I can prevail without making concessions because I I don't want to step on nobody's toes or piss them off. Right, right. good. Self-sufficient. Facts. Man, so if anybody wanted to buy any gear from St. African, where, mm -hmm. where could we go? SaintAfrican.com. Um, SaintAfrican.com, check us out, you know. Um, Saint African on Instagram, that's you can find me. Also, you can look at our other Instagram page, a Cobenware17, that's A K O B E N. Shout out to my Warriors, W E A R 17. Um, you can find us on Instagram as well. You can find us on YouTube at Saint African. Um, I guess we'll, we'll get to that. I love the YouTube. Oh, no, you're good, you're good. Uh, I'm trying to get back to my place right here. Okay. Okay, I got you. So, uh, it's been a journey of you uh, discover, well, discovering, uh, digging more deep into African knowledge, knowledge of self and, and Africa. Um, so, I could imagine your relationship with uh, your parents has changed. Yeah. Because, because of it? Yes or no? Yeah? Oh, hell yeah. Because <laughs> before, <laughs> I guess, can you describe the difference between before you had knowledge and mm -hmm. now you have knowledge? Oh, man. Your relationship oh. with your mom and... Or your dad, both, it doesn't matter. All right, I'm at the code. I'm at the code. This um, for for I guess like I I don't even know how to put it. It's, I'm still I'm still at a place right now at my life. Like I'm I'm good, and but it was like we could, I, I've been really thinking of we're coming into a new decade and things that I've experienced um, of coming of age, of being a boy, of being a man, accepting accountability, accepting my mistakes. So a lot mm -hmm. of stuff I'm looking back on now. But it's funny because um, I was just talking to my, my young boy last night and like five years ago, so yesterday, um, that's when I woke him up. Okay. And it was funny looking at the picture of us at hometown. It's just like, wow, dude. And before that, um, 
that's when me and my father was able to have a nice chat um, about things between us. And I learned that, you know, I have to... I have to show them love because due to the times that how they came up, a lot of them didn't get it and it's like we're mm. we're raising each other off of like survival. Okay. But although my father was a great man, it's just, you know, our our environments. Um and the same with my mother, like, you know, uh, we had like a rocket relationship coming up. It was it was well, but we just we just bump heads a lot. Um now, but I, I've learned with gaining knowledge is that we have to accept things for how they are, and that being sometimes being the, the the child, you have to show you have to show the parent how to love, mm. due to them not being loved properly or them not being modeled the best way, the behavior, and that since we have figured out with the knowledge of self that this slave shit, this plantation beating the kid, all this. Is not the way to go. Right. Um, we have to model up. Oh, gotcha. Um, so it's just like like to like manage up. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to model to show them. So the relationship really has gotten much better over these years. Um, still growing. Still, it's still, still getting on some things. Um, but however, like me always being an independent person, that that kind of um, that kind of guess was the thing. So now it's like I can do for myself. I can come as I as and, and they see that now and okay all that rebellious stuff you <laughs> was doing it actually works for you and you are well and you, you you're we I'm you know I don't need nothing right, I'm okay right. um and even with that just talking with the same African stuff it also purpose like I'm I'm pushing I'm pushing and that's why I always refer to myself as a catalyst <laughs> um I don't want the credit for anything but I will I would jump it off mm -hmm. and I, I wanted to go so it's just like that. I look at it like now they see that, okay, we could have just let you go instead of trying to hold you back out of out of protection. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's good. Yeah. You know, I know I kind of danced around that question, but no, no, you, I think you answered it pretty good. Okay, uh, considering because I met your mom I think twice before when we was in high school. Mm -hmm. And um, high school, right? Exactly. You see, and that's why I asked the question mm -hmm. because. Uh, the man you are now is definitely not the person you was then. Definitely. And um, I believe you had a, posted a picture of you and your mom a while back. Mm -hmm. And she had the natural hair or whatever. You was like natural queen. Mm -hmm. And to me, since I, I've seen you guys interact before in the past, like that was a big thing for me to see. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, you know what I mean? That's bonding right there. You know what yeah. I mean? That's a son and a, and a, and a mother's love. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not just biologically, but as far as uh, our people. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So. Yeah. And I see you post pictures of your dad uh, mm -hmm. before too, um, too uh, and with your brother too. Mm -hmm. So like just that generation of uh, manhood and yeah. black men and standing together, yeah. not arguing, fighting, not you know what I mean. Pants not sagging. Right. Y'all ain't out there, you know, acting crazy. Y'all just right. being one. Right. And so I see the difference of you then versus now, mm -hmm. and I wanted to know that they see the difference of you then versus now, or did you see the difference? And so I think you do. Uh, I think I do. I think, damn, at first, thank you, brother. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's really, that you said, that's really what it is trying to do. I'm, I'm like, we at a place now that we want to bond to some of the shit that, feelings. Right. Some of that shit don't matter, you know, yeah. at this point in the game. And that's how I really look at it. Like, we forget a cracker. We forget with Zungo for so much shit doing us, but it's like you matter to family and so I've learned just like some of that shit, it, it don't even matter no more. We it or it it made me who we are. So really, like I love coming around now, and as you get older, it's like I love coming around my family and right, just right. love to be just be here. And we can now we may not have the as a mother child or a father child when I'm a child, we may not have the space to really express ourselves and laugh and do this. But now as adults, we can, uh. and it's it's beautiful. And it's like like I see my mother. We um, it just flows, so it's good. And even with that, like I, I say one thing, like I get a lot of flack because I don't date women with weaves, but I never see my mother with a weave in her head. Right. So it's even things like that. It may not, we may have feelings, but I still can look that you modeled some great behavior. Uh -huh. I've always seen you natural. Right. You've been natural to me for like past twenty years. I may not have known it or really thought about it then, but now as I look, and I'm like, oh wow, this is why. 
I like this. Same with my father. He's never. You gonna post the whole hour? Go ahead. Oh, um, <laughs> where's that? Same as my father. Like he's always been a man of just means, no nonsense. Um, I always seen him working. Mm, working always, like man. Yeah, he works. Um, he been working like two jobs for I know the past. For forever, you know, for the past 20 years, I can at least say, um, of doing like referee side jobs on the end. And he make it work. He, he you know, he don't smoke. He don't drink. Um, I've, I've, I've never heard my father curse. Mm. So it's, it's funny mm. when people meet me and they be like, what <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so, but that's how I can, I can move because he showed me manhood. Oh, and I told them to this day, like, even, you know, how I always survive is just what I've seen from you. Like. You don't work, you don't eat. Mm. You feel me? And my, I always see my father working. It's like he ain't have to say nothing. I see it. Right. Um. So I'm always grateful for just modeling great behavior. That's what's up. Uh, I want to ask you um, about something called, or it could be called, New Africa. Okay. Uh, if the United States gave us five states, Florida. Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, mm. and called it New Africa. It gave us our own constitution, our own flag. Would you be open to going or being a citizen of New Africa? Hell no. Nah. Hell no. Nah. I'm, I'm cool, bro. I'm like, <laughs> I'm going to Africa. The like, real Africa, right? Going to real Africa. Um, okay. We can never have an Africa in the United States. Uh, mm. I don't even know how that'll work. And then it's like, I ain't going to lie. I don't want to live around all these niggas. Mm. And I, I use that word, Keely, um, cause it's really I guess it's gonna be just us there. Right. Oh no, I'm good, homie. Like, <laughs> I'm good. Your own president. Yeah. I don't know if you ever seen uh, Killer Mike's Netflix special, Trigger Warning. Mm -mm. But he had something like New Africa where he bought a piece of land. Had he didn't only have black people in there. He had other white people in there too. But, of course, that's Killer Mike. Uh, <laughs> we get to that later. But but anyway, salute to Killer Mike, man. Mm. <laughs> I used to love his music. Uh, but that was just one example, but I, I seen something else outside of Killer Mike where mm. they said, oh, uh, it was a YouTube video or something, whereas we'll give you these five states and you guys create your own constitution, your own everything. And I was like, man, that would be pretty dope. I was like, I would go, I would go take roots in Louisiana or something. Mm -hmm. but, but Go ahead. But, but um, yeah, so I just wanted to know uh, your perspective of something like that. Uh, you're not with it. No, nah, hell no. Nah. I mean, they've been talking about that for you. shit, damn, like 50 years. Right, like, right. I know they proposed it after slavery, then they still propose it now. I'm like, yo, I'm cool. Um, I don't want to stay in America. Like, where I'm at, it ain't safe. Um, after being in other black countries and walking around at like 4 in the morning and not worrying about police. It's just so much shit. When you out of here, which is so much here, like, there's a police station down the street. Um, right. If I want to just go get a hit a taco truck at 2 in the morning, the first thought in my head is like, damn, do I really want to go? I want to get pulled over. Uh, you know, even if everything you clean, but in Africa or anywhere, like I've been to IAT, you can go get something to eat at 3 in the morning. Mm. You go walk down the street and you be like, I need, the police don't even cross your mind. Right. Like, just having a thought like that yeah. is, it shows we still under servitude. Um, why we even have that thought? I, Man, I gotta worry about the police. I'm gonna get a fool. I'm gonna get some food. Right, right. So I'm yeah. so, um, okay, I got two things. First thing is, see if I can remember the other things. But the first thing is, um, you said Haiti? IT. IT? Yeah. Haiti. This Haiti. Yeah. Why IT. Did you, why'd you say it like that? that That's what the indigenous people called it. That's, oh, I never knew that. Wow. Yeah. IT. So you've been there before? Mm hmm. How was that? It was beautiful. Was it recent or? Years ago. I went last year. Okay. Yeah, I went last year for my birthday. It was great. Uh, it was what was your beautiful. experience in, in Haiti? Uh, beautiful, man. A lot of people say it was. It's a dangerous country. It's really not. Like maybe if you was Zungu, but um, it's not. I was beautiful. I went by myself. I met so many people that I'm still in contact with. Um, I, I don't speak Creole, but I still learned how to get around with uh, my phone and the Google Translate. Wow. You know, and that was just meeting people and looking at their eyes and I need this and I'll type it in and be like, here. I'm not as scared, like, here, you know, read this. Um, so that's how I communicate with a lot of people down there. Wow. I met um, I met some young some young boys that was running with me in Jack Mill and, mm. um, you know, I took him out to lunch and we had a good meal and um, it was prepared right there on the street. 
So I gave the woman, uh, and if she was so grateful, I gave her uh, fifteen hundred goods, goods because mm-hmm. the, the currency is called goods. And she was just so juiced that right, I right. gave her that. But to me, it's, it's really it was like it's fifteen hundred there, but to us it was like thirteen dollars fifty one cents for uh. three big ass plates. Uh. You dig so. Dang. That she just prepared right there fresh. And I was like, yo, it's nothing. So just being able to do that, to put money in a, a woman's hands that's right here on the street, it goes straight to her. Right. And she was like, oh, thank you, thank you. And I'm like, oh, thank you. Right. You know, because the food is worth it. Uh, right. You know, and to us, $13 for three big-ass <laughs> plates. Right. But to them, that that's five, you know, that's right. 1500 Right. So that probably lasts for a good minute. Um, so just being able to do that. Running to people like that, um, it was beautiful. I, I could say, hey, Haiti is one of the best places, one of the best kept secrets. Um, I went up in the mountains. Mm. I met some people. I met this, um, we went to Beijing Blue. It's like a waterfall in the mountains. It was beautiful. Um, I met this uh, woman from New York. Um, she was nice. Shout out to her. Um, and she was just like, what are you doing here? And she heard, <laughs> I, was, I was moving through and I was trying to get past and I was like, excuse me. And she was like, yo, you got a, a accent. Where are you from? I'm like, oh, I'm from California. She's like, well, what are you doing here? Which we were in the mountains in the waterfall. Like, <laughs> right, right. You ran the spot ever. Right. She's like, you by yourself? I'm like, yeah, I'm out for my birthday. And she's just so impressed. And it's like, wow, um, you actually came here by yourself to snap. So just having those experiences. Haiti is dope. Very prideful people. So the second part of that I want to ask you, you said that your dad was or people from Haiti? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah, my dad's side. Right, right. So you you have a good um, you have good knowledge of not just self as a person, but family that groups. To an extent, yeah, yeah. I, I'm I'm working on it. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Nice, nice. That's imp- a lot of people don't don't know where their dad is, let alone where their dad people are from. You know true, what I'm saying? True, true. <laughs> That's true. Um, so I know you're really not a political person. But with the 2020 campaign just around the corner next year, mm-hmm. um, it's a lot of candidates, Republican, Democrat, whatever, independent. Um, a lot of them are talking about rep- reparations mm-hmm. for blacks this time. Seems to be a big thing now. What's your thoughts about reparations? Um, I don't know. Can, can it be done, you think? I don't think so. Uh, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be better than last place. <laughs> Um, you know, I, I don't have a problem with it. I think that, you know, if they want to pay us, pay us. I'm down. I'm going to Africa, like, off the top. Um, if they want to give us a check. I, like, I, I, first off, I don't believe they're going to give it to us. Okay. Um. They're trying to get a vote? They're trying to get a vote. Uh, if they do, cool. I, I'll take the check. Mm-hmm. Um, we still here. Um, I'm taking the check and I'm going to Africa. Like, straight, simple, and plain. It, it's not even a thought. I'll take the check. I'll go to Africa. Um, but I think, you know, with that, we still have to look at who deserves reparations. Um, you know, it, it is going to be like direct descendants from slaves in America. And it's mm-hmm. like, how deep are we saying descendants? Like, it's going to be black people. It's going to be non-black people. So, to me, it, it gets real muddy because it's like, at, at one point, you may have a typical white person getting reparations because of us. Right, right. You know, because, oh, my, my father, their great-grandfather could have been a black man, and they right. just kept it white the whole line. Mm. So that loads back to, like, our identity and, like, who was black. Right, right. So it's just like, we we well, need to know. Right. Dang, I didn't think about it that way. You, you're you correct. That's crazy. Yeah. They, they have those, uh, what they, what's called, um, $5 Indians, I believe it was. Even that, yeah. You know what I mean? How they did for the natives. They, right. I got $5, but you're not Indian at all, but you got the money to pay for it. You got it the money. To, to proclaim it to be. And still getting free college. And still getting free college. Mm-hmm. Man. Um, let's talk about a little bit about religion. Um, okay. Christianity in the um, black community. Is it positive, negative? Like, what's your thoughts on I know you're not big on religion or Christianity. Yeah. Um, I don't really... I, like, at this point in my life, I don't really care for it. Like, it don't bother me. Like, it don't bother me. I think if some people want to utilize it, I'm not going to be mad at you. Um, a lot of people are ashamed their people are Christians, but it's like they 
they live in fantasy lands. Like I went to Africa, it's a lot of Christians over there. Okay. And I tell people now, like the these these weirdo these weirdo motherfuckers on like on, online bashing on them. Like I know somebody they be going hard on Christianity. They they may see this get mad. I don't really give a fuck. Um, but they have a white Jesus hanging up in their house. Right. And it's just like, hold up, you're a black person. A black person. Well, right. they mo. I ain't even, I ain't even <laughs> going on. Here we go. <laughs> I'm not even going on that. We're going viral. But, but this is like things like this. The, these people, they they bang on Christians online and shit on Christians and all that. But it's like, yo, you're living under the same roof with somebody that has a white Jesus up in your living room you see this daily right. but why you don't do this to them so my, you know it's like it's insanity because at some point you would if it was that if it was that if it mattered that much you would take that down and where you live mm. no matter who it is you know right. so it's like i keep running into people like this but I, at the point where i'm at i'm not mad if you want to pray to jesus pray to jesus okay. um i don't care like it don't bother me right, right. i'm not going to do it I think I'm not gonna say it's, it has negative effects. It has positive and negative effects. Like some Christian people, I know I have a friend. Um, you may know I'm not gonna say her name, but um, from Pittsburgh, um, she she's deep Christian and she's a woman of, of morals, values. I don't see her out here dotting out all this extra shit right. that I see all these people that know my art and all this the stuff they uh -huh. doing. So um, really, I look at it now as like from I guess it goes like dating and women. Mm -hmm. I, at some of these points, like a, a Christian woman's not bad. Okay, right, right. At right. least you got morals in a book and and, and guidelines, right. opposed to somebody who I'm not in this. I think I just do willy nilly, mm -hmm. and you gonna forgive? Nah, it don't work right. like that. So, but then it could be negative. Like you have a killer who think you just repenting, mm -hmm. and it's all good. You know, so I look at it from both sides, but I'm not, I'm not gonna be upset with somebody on spiritual system. Gotcha. Um, I know it's bullshit at the end of the day, right, right. but I'm at the, where I'm at in life, I'm not. I think we have bigger problems than Christianity because even if we eradicate it here, we gotta go to Africa and do that. Mm. And I think a lot of people forget that. And you know, I like I've been to Africa and I've been in the church in Africa. It was great. Some of the I met some of the greatest people ever. That were Christians in Africa, and I told them I didn't believe in it. They ain't think nothing less than me. Right, right. So who am I to to do all that? And I'm like, yo, let's deal with who's black first. Where I'm at, let's deal with who's black first before we talk about Christianity and all right. that. Because the if that's gonna get the black man or the the Islam get the black man to keep him in his home and keep him feeding his family and doing this and that, I won't be mad for. <laughs> right, right. They live about morals and respects, and they're taking care of their business. This is just what keeps them probably sane. Sane. Let's just say that. Right. Uh, so you spoke a little bit about uh, black women and, and dating. Mm -hmm. So uh, what's your perspective of, uh, <laughs> like smiling cheesy, but Here we go. what's your perspective of uh, dating in America, of black women? Uh, let's just say dating in America. I already, I already got slander for, for saying something <laughs> in Africa about black women, but I didn't actually say. Um, but I mean, who man, like I say, it's... Ooh, good lord, dating is fucked up. Like dating is real fucked up out here, especially as a man like my age, um, late twenties, early thirties. That range, are a lot of women right out here right now is just not. I mean, <coughs> this is not wife material, you know. And I'm not just speaking on black women. I'm saying women in general, mm. um, and all of them are really model a good amount of modeling the same behavior. Um, we can look online and just like we can see the reality of things, even in like the black nationalism community and all that. You got women posing naked with books and you holding you posing naked in a bathtub with a soda book, like mm -hmm. are you trying to be like a, a warrior or are you trying to show that you're studious or trying you trying to show your ass? Like I don't know. Right, right. But it's still it like confusing me. Right. It confuses me or I done came across for me, dating, I speak about me. For me dating is hard because I guess I have a lot of uh I don't call them I just have like standards like I wouldn't date a, I don't want to date a single mother. Like, if anything, I'll encourage you to go get back what you do. Like, mm. why you? How can you hold me to some high standard that you can't hold the man you spread your legs for to? Mm. Like, it don't it don't make sense. And on top, I'm a man of man of value and just means I don't got time to raise somebody else's child. Mm. Let that nigga do that. Um, I, I like natural women, so I don't like women that wear weaves and 
you know, I don't want to date nobody that wears weave. So that already cut out a big pool and, you know, just just things. And I, I don't like, I don't really like Wazungu. I don't be around Wazungu. Um, so even with that, I got to, you want to go do this and do, I'm cool. Wazungu, explain. Yeah, that's why he word for white people. So, <laughs> Gotcha. Wazungu. I want to be around Wazungu. Um, so, I, yeah. I got up on my Swahili. I'm learning. Forgive me for my ignorance. No, it's all good. <laughs> I'm learning. Because even with that, with, like this, with the same African, you know, it's kind of like when we at work with the Hispanics and uh, everybody else, they have their language. Yeah. So, at least we can be, we can be sitting somewhere and, and then some, like, somebody white can do something. We were like, oh, Wazungu. And they were like, what is, what is that? But we will know. Right, right, and we right, just right, laugh. Right, right. And it's just so. They do it to us already. Facts. <laughs> So, so I'm, I'm where I'm at now is just like, um, even if we in them things, we could just say Wazungu, and that's between us. And it yeah. sounds like that, and they're like, "What the hell are they talking about?" Yeah. It don't matter. Right. You know. I'm just gonna go off. I'm gonna go off topic real quick. I gotta throw some no limit stuff in here. Okay. Uh, I got the hookup too. The movie, right? Uh huh. There's a there's a scene where the, they're at the back of the restaurant, and there's a Mexican back there cooking, and a black man walks in, and the Mexican starts talking in his language. And he's uh, talking bad about the black guy. Yeah. The black guy has no idea, but he think he knows. And he's kind of going back and forth trying to stop the Mexican. Like, yo, what did you just say? You said you're going to rob my car? No, I know what you said. Right. And the Mexican keeps talking. And he says, no, no, no. I say everything all good. But that's not what he that's said what he at said. all. Right. <laughs> right. So just like know, that. Well, yeah, we, we get locked out. And it's just, it's right. heavy. Right. It's heavy. Um, you're very uh, studious individual. Um what books would you recommend for our people to read or catch up on? I oh, mean, I just did this on um, on Instagram, but I, I would, um, how many, I guess, would you? Uh, give me three. Give me three books I recommend. Um, definitely, number one would be The Developmental Psychology of the Black Child by Dr. Amos Wilson. I think that is a, a pertinent book all black parents should read. I learned some things about myself reading that book. Mm. After reading that book, I see black children in public, and I just can't help but smile and and be like, yo, this is a genius. All black children are geniuses. Um, we fuck them up. Mm. We fuck them up. Um, because we don't even like letting them explore the environment and, and play and, and do things like this. And we stop, don't do that. Don't do this. Uh. Don't do that. And it's like, we can even think back as a child. And we was like many scientists. We're breaking things down, putting it back together, trial and error, mm -hmm. um, which is hard for us to do in America. But I've seen that so much in, in Africa of trial and error. And I'm thinking like, damn, just to have that, right. which is kind of like what you're doing, what I'm doing with your business. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we're doing them in our own ways right. of trial and error, what makes us get better, uh, exactly. you know? So so like that, Um, number two, uh, a book that I would, oh, yeah, 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 The Destruction of the Black Civilization, you know, Great Issues of a Race from... I think it's 2500 BC up to now, to 2000 or 4000 BC up to now. But basically, I call that my Bible. Mm -hmm. um, it's by Dr. Chancellor Williams, rest his soul. Um, it's basically like our story from in somewhat inception, but really from Kemet, um, which or Sudan, to now. Um, and just going over, and it's a great reference book. You can check migration patterns. You can you can line it up with other pieces, other historical books. Um, and then as well, you have to to read it well. It's a lot of coded things. Like when they talk about Ethiopians, he's not talking about Ethiopians today, which are really Habisha people. That's mixed people from Yemen. Mm -hmm. So it's like you have to put everything together. But the book is about, I've, to me, I'll be like, it's about 80% accurate, 85. But you still have to, you have to read it codedly. And he says that, but a, a lot of people, they just oppose it. Uh -huh. Um... A third book, I guess, I, I can recommend. Uh, damn, out of those two, out of three. What, what, uh, they were Take a Genie's a great book. Uh, it's, a, it's a story on of, uh, of IET. It's basically the story of how IET won independence in 1804 from, from the whole way. Shout out to my man, Dessaline. Um, I don't know, like a third book, like... I don't know, like that. I really, I recommend. I guess. Um, oh hell yeah! I just, read, <laughs> I just read this book. Uh, I want to say the black man's guys are understanding a black woman. Mm. You dig? Mm, I um, need that book. Shout out to doctor. <laughs> shout out to doc, to doctor. Shout out Ali. 
it's a great book. I read it earlier this year, and I, I just I woke up. Mm. I realized, and I realized, I see why all, all these black women was mad at her on these shows in the '90s. She exposed the game. Mm. She really exposed the game, man. It's just like it's not their fault. It's not their fault. Some it's like their parents and mothers, and they they playing the game. And it just shows with the feminism that black everybody's always gaming on the black man. Everybody's running the game on the black man. We don't realize it. Even um, and it starts like in the house, and she broke it down like as your mother would tell her daughter like. Don't tell your dad. Mm. And it starts right there of keeping things from your father. Uh. And it's like, you just planted the seed and they don't even think how far that can go. Uh. Or a woman disrespecting the father in the house in front of the kids or just, don't tell your dad or I can do what I want. These are my bills. That, that whole thing plants a mantra in a woman's head. Mm. So you already train from a girl to go against your, to go against males, to keep things from males. So, or to not tell the full truth. Mm. It's like, oh, I just told a little bit, and they, and we meet adults that think that's still fine, and we like, yo, you lied. Right. It's like, no, I exaggerated. <laughs> right. But yeah. um, wow. lastly, a, a book I can say is The Iceman Inheritance by Michael Bradley. That's one of my favorite books. It's written by a white man. Um, he told the truth. It talks about the uh, like the Ice Man, um, how. Europeans were in the Ice Age, mm -hmm. and it shows why they had a mentality they have. Like, and I always use the example of you remember Jackass. Yeah. So, which is why they they push the natural rules of the universe for their liking and impose their will because in the Ice Age they had to do that because basically they would have died. Mm. So you had to eat raw meat. You had to. You didn't want to. Um, you didn't want to um, have babies with a woman, but we know back then there was no condoms. Right, right. So if you don't. Wanted to get pregnant, what are you gonna do? You gonna, you gonna have her suck your dick, or you gonna fuck her in the ass? Uh, so that's like these are some of these things come from, but uh, now it's so normalized because their will is on us. Wow. Not saying that it's, now I don't do the butt play, you're gay. But not saying, you know, a little, uh, a little, uh, a, yeah, ain't nothing wrong with that male or female, ain't nothing wrong with that. <laughs> it's, it's pleasurable. Uh, but just like things like that, you see, oh wow, this is where it come from. Or like, why would they hurt themselves? To get out of something. Because, mm. you know, us, if it was a fire, we may not jump out the building. We may be like, it's over. Right, right. You dig? They cry. The Wazuku jumping out of a three-story building. Right, he right. He don't care. He busts his head as long as I live. So, think, <laughs> things like that. Right. Things the like that. The lights are out. End it all. Right. <laughs> Thank yourself. I'm jumping. Or even, <laughs> I want a bungee jump to have fun. Or right, all, right. all these things. The adrenaline rush. Uh, stuff like that. So, definitely. Crazy book. The Iceman Inheritance. Um... Dr. Khaled. Great man. Praise his name. <laughs> Please, uh, you visited his grave? Facts. I visited his grave in New York, um, April this year. Wow. I gave my respects. I made sure I, I made sure I go, I wanted to say hello to him and, and give him his praise before I went to Africa. I thought it would only be right. I couldn't go to Africa without getting this blessing. Dang, you know, so I, I love Dr. Khaled. He, he held it down. And it, again, you spell his name with two L's. Because people out here naming their child Khalid, this, that, and third, and they got one L in their name. And I'm just like, yo, what the hell? Right, right. So it shows, I ain't even going to that, but two yeah. L's. But he was a great man, a great soldier, a great leader, and he did his job. Man, much respect. Much respect. Uh, I know, like I know you, like I say, off, side of off, off the camera, I know you. Mm -hmm. So hip-hop right now. Yeah. Are you are you liking like this new generation of hip hop? Hell no, that shit is trash, man. <laughs> it's boo boo. Like I can't even front. So, uh, could you give me um, three artists that you playing right now, currently in rotation? Uh, I can try to think. Give I me mean, two. You toss me my phone. I I can get it right there. Uh, to see who's my recently played. Like what I'm really listening to right now. Um, I listen to a lot of Nas. Ice Cube, Ice Cube is one of my favorites. Um, I guess I get my top five: Ice Cube, Nas, Scarface, um, it, it, it Switch, uh, DMX, the dog, the dog all day, and Prodigy. Prodigy, Prodigy, RP Prodigy. And for ten, I'm six will be Exhibit. Oh, Exhibit! Well, People sleep on Exhibit. Exhibit, dope, corrupt. Corrupt was in the five, but uh, he, he fell. Um, <laughs> AZ. Okay. AZ. Um, uh, who else? Uh, I don't know. 
Uh, cause it, it, it's it's a, oh Saigon, okay, Saigon, okay. and for like number ten, I would say, who that's a, that's a tough one. I said A Z. Am, am I missing anybody? Missing any West Coast people? No Snoop in there? Nah, hell no. Nah. I ain't. I'm, I'm cool. From the West Coast. So Dub C? Nah, Dub is Dub is dope though. He's a he's a beast MC. You gonna throw Eminem in there? Hell no. Nah. <laughs> hell no. Nah. I don't know. I mean. Drake? For, Nah, he ain't no, he ain't no rapper. Um, for ten, I don't know. It used to be killer like I used Killer to be, Mike. Killer Mike spot got took. Right. I, don't, I don't. Nah, he he done. Um, I don't know. Going through the phone, you ain't found nobody yet. I'm I'm, I'm really trying. Come? I'm really trying to see like out of, out of the top ten at this point. <laughs> I, I don't know who would take that ten spot. Ti? Uh, I guess I would say um. Ghost, Ghostface Killer. Ghostface Killer. I'll go with Ghostface Killer, yeah. Uh, I'll go with Ghostface name? Killer. Have you, all right, I got two questions. We've got about four minutes left. First okay. question is, uh, did you see the video, what's it, Mo, Mo, Moses Malone? Post Malone? Uh, the dude who did the Tupac Must Die video. Oh, Glasses Malone. Glasses Malone. Yeah, yeah. He's dope, too. Your thoughts about the video? It was cool. I thought it was dope. Yeah, it like, was dope. I thought I it was dope. It. I like, it was great to see a whole different perspective. Right, right. Um, just from their side. Right, right. It was, yeah, dope. it was dope. All right, cool, cool. Last question I got for you. I know you were a Southern Cow, a Southern Cow guy in, in Tupac uh -huh. knowledge, but uh, that's why I have to ask that. We got about three minutes left. I'm going to ask you this. If you could have any laws and statutes implemented in the United States of America within the next hour, what would it be? Black courts. Black courts. Black I like courts. that. I like black that. people hold down. Black people go to court in black court. Man. We have our own racial court. So if, if you rape a baby or you kill somebody, you murder this and that, we deal with your ass. Uh. We want to hang you up, you know, on the street pole, you know, have motherfuckers beat on your head. I'm with that. Black court. We make an example out of people. We Man. don't we don't want pedophiles and, you know, rapists and murderers right. and all these walking around the neighborhood. It's like, and, that, and that's the problem. That's the biggest problem. Yeah, and that's good with the last question. Because the biggest problem we got is black people are scared of Europeans and everybody else, but they're not scared to do no harm to black people. Mm. And that shit infuriates me because we can't go nowhere because if I kill you right now, I know it's no consequence, but I'm not going to go rob nobody over there in Walnut Creek. Uh, great point. Dick Gregory, Bye Bye Dick Gregory, I love the man of death, uh, God rest his soul. He said that uh, white cops killing black men, he said, how come you don't see black cops killing white men? Do you think they got more spirituality or they're more, uh, uh, they love God more? He said no, because he know because black people know that the white community is not going to stand for it. Right, and, and it's the thing, like, we've seen, we seen George Zimmerman now. Put oh, up, my he put God. a $100 million lawsuit, and it goes back to this. Just what Dick Gregory said. White people march up to the house. Like, they remember they used to do in the 50s and 60s, even back then. They snatch your black ass out. Exactly. We over here want to march. Yeah. Go snatch that. They, snatch his ass out of his house, hang him up, beat him up. We don't want to take it that far. Right, we don't do that. Now, I'm not saying less it's like violence, you know. Right, but I'm right. saying that these people will do it. We want to march and pull out the phone. Like, that's going to save us. And right. you need to go over there and put some direct aggression. You know, if it's that or you can just... Let the murderer keep walking around and you crying. I don't. Right. I don't really understand it. It's crazy. If it was my children, yeah, we'll be some. We have to. Justice will have to be served. Right. Black court. Yeah. I like that. Black court. Man. Well, I want to thank you. Got about a minute left. I appreciate you saying African. Uh, you got any last things you want to tell the people within this last minute? You want to promote the brand? You want to promote anything? The floor is yours for the next sixty seconds. Okay. Um. This is beautiful. First off, thank you. Shout out to TV Savalas. Like, subscribe, check them out. Um, you can find me at saneafrican.com. Um, everything Sane African related, saneafrican.com. That's me. Um, Instagram, Sane African. Uh, you want to check out the clothing and check us out. We do work with youth. A lot of the proceeds of Sane African does go to youth work. Um, you may not see many things, but like as my brother can vouch me, I'm moving silence. Um, I don't like to exploit the people I, I help or the people I work with. I'm not with that. Um, we do this for the heart. We don't do this for notoriety. Um, but Saint African on YouTube, check us out. Um, you want to find me? Like I said, everything Saint African related. That's where I'm at. Check out the clothes, SaintAfrican.com. Uh, and, and yo, ACBN is the only way. Black or brown skin, African texture, hair. Um, that, that's really it, man. Shout out to everybody that supports me. 
I appreciate you, Zavalas, for giving me the platform to come on here. Um, no problem, brother. Today, you know. I appreciate the time and, and, and you uh, agreeing to sit down with me and have this discussion, brother. Always. Peace in. Peace out. Mm.